Hello everybody. Project today is a tin cover or what we might think of as a pot lid. Just selecting a piece and I'll be using this template. Uh, the dimensions on this template are given in Brummel's as 20 inches long with a 36 inch radius. And for making larger covers you can simply move it along like I do here or cut out multiple pieces and solder them together. I really like these tin covers because they replace plastic. So I make them for glass jars. Uh, in this case a friend of mine has a large stainless steel dispenser and it does not have a lid. Uh, he makes various uh, beverages, iced tea or lemonade, to bring to um, events that he caters as a barbecue chef. And he's always forever just covering these with a, a piece of tin foil. He let me borrow one for an event at which I was serving apple cider. And I decided I would give it back to him with a nicer cover. Although, because I was straining the cider into it, not having a lid was uh, worked pretty well for me. One thing you'll notice is I'm using my right hand with the shears. If you're a southpaw like me, um, and you want to get into tinsmithing, just use the shears in your right hand. It, very soon it will be um, easy to do, and you, you can't, like that little notch right there, it's very difficult to make with, with a standard pair of shears in your left hand. All of the marks are obscured by the uh, blade coming down, and the uh, material exits on the wrong side of the shear, so your your hand is in the way. It's just much, much easier to just use them in your right hand. So just soldered that joint closed. Um, in this case I used a uh, 8515 solder with no lead, just tin, um, just a uh, tin alloy. 85% tin, and then uh, I'm not sure what the 15% is. I, I can't recall right now, but it's lead free. Because this will be used to hold beverages, we don't want any lead in there. It's really not that much harder to solder with the with the lead free. It, it, it doesn't flow as easily, and it doesn't leave quite as shiny a, a finish. Sometimes you get a little crummy finish, but um, it's not not worth putting lead in a in a food pro uh, food container. So there we have the burr. Um, if you notice when I do these burrs and I'll and when I do the cover, you'll be able to see it as well. The whole key to burring on one of these uh, burring engines like this is getting the tin set at a very slight angle the entire way around the piece and then just adjust the angle slightly and let it get everything at the new angle uh, and then adjust it again raise it slightly if you try to pick your piece up too quickly you, you, you get a potato chip Love this circle cutter. Now this is by far the longest uh, process here in, in making a lid. Probably took me 20 minutes or so to raise this lid. Um, I just have a, the old beach block there with a rough out uh, that I made in it. I could use kind of any stump. Any, any depression. You're not really forming it to um, 
the depression. It doesn't it doesn't work like that. You kind of go around the entire diameter and it, almost like the burn. You're just bending it a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. You just keep going around in what they call courses, concentric rings that, that go into the center. So it's not, I'm not pressing it down into this um, dish that's carved into the wood. So it really can be any size. And then once I get it uh, sunk, I'll, I'll go to the stake and raise, raise it now. So this is the raising. Because this is a utility cover, um, I'm sure it's going to get things dropped on it, banged up, you know, knocked around, uh, thrown in and out of the truck. Uh, so I'm not going to go, I'm not going to planish this. Uh, but this hardwood stick, what I found is that um, it does a fairly good job of planishing, and I actually really like the surface. A lot of my stuff is made to be seen by candlelight or flickering light, and so I, I love the little subtle uh, undulations. But uh, you can see there, it, it planishes it up pretty nicely. So I just want to make sure it sits flat before I um, go to the next stage. I'm not sure that it matters, but um, in this next stage we're going to be turning, turning that uh, metal completely around from where it is. You know, we're going to flip it right over. And that certainly causes enough stress that I like to make sure the piece is flat first. So here, this machine is for setting the groove for a wire in a container. So you would normally would go around sort of the top edge of a bucket, and this would give you the, the groove for the wire to sit in. I'm using it here to delineate the flat section of the cover from the domed section. And I'm just going around flattening that lip. And now we're going to burr that up. So here you can see very subtly range, uh, changing the angle and making sure that the new angle is you know, goes completely around the lid before we change the angle. Now if you get this right, uh, the cover should snap into place. I'm getting better at this. Um, one, one thing that I do is I'll, I'll very, very lightly burr the cover and then set it on, set the inner ring on it to look at, you know, if I need to make some adjustments. And that seems to have helped. Uh, here you can hear a nice pop and it settles right into place. I think I find the one section that isn't quite in. As soon as it snaps, it's held pretty snugly. Um, you know, you wouldn't want to use it like that, but, uh, but it should hold itself, it should snap in place and hold itself in place. So here I just take the stick and I go around um, and I just lightly hammer that edge up. Um, again, if you get it right, the, the burrs, there's a little bead uh, at the base of the burr on the cover, and the burr on the band will, will um, sit right into that bead. That's the snap that you hear, and it really makes a nice clean edge. If you get it wrong, you just have some flat spots in your edge. It's not the end of the world, but um, this is by far one of the nicer ones that I've had come together. Just trimming up a piece for the 
uh, handle, a little loop on the lid. And I'll hem both sides of this loop just to give it a little more um, stiffness and also to protect the fingers from that single thickness edge of tin. Whenever you go to bend a ring like this, you want to uh, make a J, and then a C, and then a JCL. That's the, uh, the way to go. And now we just solder that in place uh, with the same solder. I, I could probably use, um, you know, garage sale solder up here because it's on top. But uh, there it is. Goes down with a nice, satisfying uh, feeling of the air. And it comes up with a nice pop. Well, there it is. I uh, hope this helps you uh, make a cover. Thanks for watching.